All right, so we were trying to create a distribution, and I had found these numbers in here and the frequencies here, and now I'm going to find the total by using the sum feature. Oops, not sum, <laughs> sum. And I want it to sum up all these values. And I'm gonna label this for myself, that way I know this was the total. All right, now here, we learned this in 2, 1. We're going to take cell B2. We're going to divide it by B11. But you give B11 dollar signs. So it's dollar sign B, dollar sign 11. And then I'm going to go back up into that cell. I pressed enter. Then I click back on the cell. I move the cursor to the bottom right corner. And I fill it down the column is what that's called. Right. All right. Oh, and in case you're wondering, how did I make my columns bigger or wider or whatever? Um, I just kind of make it so that the cursor is halfway. Can you see how it's like hovering over the line between A and B? And it turns into a double-sided arrow. And if a double click, oops, not, sometimes double clicking works, sometimes it doesn't. There, I just kind of clicked and dragged it over. And then I'm going to double click. I did the same thing there with the rows. I moved it between the one and the two. I double clicked and it automatically made it as wide or as narrow as I wanted. There you go just makes it quick. I like I like my um, Excel spreadsheets to look pretty um, because that's just how I am, I guess. <laughs> All right. And quite frankly, you should too. I mean, the whole point of an Excel spreadsheet is that it's saving and organizing your work. Speaking of saving, make sure you press save up here or control S a lot. That way you don't lose everything. All right. That's going to go away. All right. So we've got the relative frequencies found. I could just go um, copy and paste them in here. Copy. We weren't given any, oh, rats. Hold on one second. There, I had to fight my spacing just a little bit. But there you go. We weren't given any specific number of decimal places. So, I mean, if you wanted to round them or not, that's up to you. I mean, I could go in here, highlight the cells, right click, and click format cells right here. It's a general number, so I'm going to go to number, and I'm going to say I want three decimal places. It'll save them all three decimal places. Another way to do it, highlight the cells, go to the home screen, and it's up here somewhere. Oh, there it is. Click on this little number icon right here. This is the number menu right here. You can say what kind of number you want here. You can you can fuss around with it with a quick pull down menu, like if it was money or something. Or you can go in here and let's say I want less decimal places. I want more decimal places. I mean, so there's quick ways to do it. Personally, I just kind of highlight the cells and click format cells and do what I want. But, you know, if you want quick pull down menu stuff, that's up here as well. And you can get to that menu also through this. So if you highlight that data, and go right here, that little arrow that pulls up the, the number menu. Okay, the format cells menu, but it'll work. All right, so let me say I want those just for the heck of it. Let me go back to Word. I'm going to repaste it. Hold on. There. I had to fight my pagination just a little bit. Okay, so what is the mode number of games? What's the most frequent number of games a player on the men's JCC basketball team has played? That would be 12. Oh, oops, sorry. Because more um, JCC men's basketball players had played in 12 games than any other number. Done. Beautiful. All right, we're finished with that. You've made um, a frequency distribution. It should be very similar to you, um, to the ones we were doing for the M&Ms, because it really is the same thing. All right, now we're going to be making histograms. See them? And we're not going to have time to go into all of it in this video. We'll start it in this video and finish it in the next. So to make a frequency histogram, a frequency histogram is sort of like a glorified bar chart. But the difference between a histogram and a bar chart is that, see, the bars are going to touch like that right? Because they're not categories. These are actual numbers, right? And there's no gap between a six and a seven. All right. So you're going to go to Excel. You're going to highlight your frequency. You're going to choose insert column. And you're going to wait for the next video to see how to finish it out.